Good morning and welcome to worship. My name is Lee Nish. I'm pastor at Sparks United Methodist Church. We're delighted you're joining us this morning and I get to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. I know, I know. Many people are disappointed at having to either cancel or scale back their Thanksgiving plans. I'm sure you're one of those folks, just as we are, as we look forward to this coming week. And with the pandemic spiking in our area of Nevada, particularly in Washoe County, we can't be too careful. And so we want to continue to um, respect Governor Sisolak's order to stay at home uh, version 2.0. And we'll see what this 14-day uh, suggestion does for us. But in the meantime, what I'd like to do is suggest this. We're still going to worship. We're still going to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And instead of focusing on all those things that are wrong with the world, we're going to focus on those things that are right. In fact, if you will, we're going to count our blessings. And in recognizing how richly we are blessed and we have been blessed, I believe that this service will be exactly the threshold that we all need to enter into a Thanksgiving week where we truly exhibit hearts of thanks. And as a part of giving thanks with a grateful heart, let's sing Give Thanks as part of living into that grateful heart of loving God with all soul, mind, and strength and the beauty of the creation which God has given us to enjoy. Hi, I'm Alexis, and today I will be reading Matthew 25, verses 31 through 40. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. 
All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of those who are members of my family, you did it to me. So today we conclude our series of messages on making a deep commitment to the great commandment. And I simply want to remind you that as we launched this series of messages, we recalled that a great commitment to the great commandment and the great commission builds a great church. I uh, extended that to say simply this, a great commitment to the great commandment and the great commission builds a great disciple of Jesus Christ. And that, after all, is what we have been exploring during this series of messages on making a deep commitment to the great commandment. We want to walk closer with Christ. We want to call Jesus our Lord and Savior. And as calling Jesus our Lord, we live into God's kingdom and God's reign, even here on earth, just as it is in heaven. And so with that in mind, we're going to explore one more step in loving God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength, and by loving our neighbor as ourselves. Now, it was in a recent interview that the Episcopal leader in Manhattan was asked this question. As a spiritual leader, what would be your recommendation that people could do to get this COVID-19 pandemic under control, and he had a very simple word to share with us. He said, just as soon as people begin caring for one another as much as they care for themselves, we'll get this pandemic under control. Now, I thought that those were very wise words, and they happened to align with, I believe, Jesus' intention for his understanding of those first two commandments, the second which is like unto the first, love your neighbor just as you love yourself. Now in the scripture reading we just heard, uh, it was uh, kind of the end of days, and we uh, understood the separation of the sheep and the goats, and the plumb line that Jesus was sharing in this parable, this story, was simply this. Whenever you do something to one of the least of these, you do it to me. If you do it to the stranger in your midst, you've done it to me. Now, I think oftentimes when we take a look at this text, we immediately think, okay, I'm in the midst of the person who has agency. I'm the one who uh, gives clothing to the poor, to feed the hungry, and so forth. But for just this message... I would like you to entertain a different perspective in this story. Instead of being the one who has agency, in other words, the one who serves, I would like you to entertain the notion of being the stranger. The, the one who is in the place of Jesus, the one who we serve. And I want you to recall, if you can, a time or times in your life that you felt that you were in the role of a stranger. How did that feel? How did it feel to be maybe in a group of people, none of whom you knew, no one was coming up to you to say hello. It was as if 
you didn't exist. Maybe during those periods of time, you had a need. <laughs> Maybe you needed your next meal. Maybe you needed a roof over your head. Maybe you needed a set of clothes. You knew in that moment what it felt like to be the stranger. Well, some of you might find this hard to believe, but I have actually gone through seasons of my life when I've known what it felt like to be the stranger, to be the one where no one knew uh, who I was, and, and I was really dependent upon their good graces and the good graces of God. Now to make matters even worse, I was born and still am in some ways a pretty shy individual. Uh, you might not recognize that in me because oftentimes when you see me, I'm either up in front of a group of people speaking, or in this case, I'm in front of a camera. But you, you seem to think that I'm the most self-assured person in the world, and I have no continuing thoughts of being shy, and that is the farthest thing from the truth. And I'll tell you, whenever I'm appointed to a new congregation, all those feelings of shyness return. I am indeed the stranger in your midst. And I have only grown spiritually because of the kindness that you ha have extended to me as a stranger who has come into your midst. Let me share with you a few examples and I, I'm just going to stick to my professional life, but there are so many other places where I have felt the stranger. Uh, the shyness has returned. I felt a bit helpless, and I've really depended upon uh, others who would come to my aid. But I want to just tell you a little bit about my first appointment first uh, to our Cupertino Church. This was my first full-time appointment. I was an associate pastor. I had just arrived, and I didn't know what to expect. And, you know... They threw a party for me. They threw a party for me, and unbeknownst to me, they had arranged for my parents to send a whole group of photos. Now, this was back in 1979, so it was before a lot of video work was being done. They got a bunch of photos of me when I was an infant and a child, and they put them on the bulletin board so that everybody could really see that I was just as human as they were. Can I tell you that some of those photos I don't even recall ever seeing, and some that I did see, I have to say I was a bit embarrassed. But you know, just to be in the company of others who were laughing, not at me, but with me, because they all knew that they had photographs when they were young. And it was kind of a, a welcoming ritual, if you will, welcomed me into what was called the Good Sam family, a family to which I still believe I belong and always feel comfortable returning to. And even at home during these times of uh, COVID and Zoom, when I'm able to connect with people back in Cupertino that I otherwise could not unless I traveled there, for I was a stranger. And you welcomed me. You treated me as well as you would have treated yourself. I remember uh, being appointed to my second church, Gilroy United Methodist Church. It was a much smaller congregation, but I was the lead pastor there. And that is where I was officially ordained into the United Methodist Church. And this congregation was so loving and so appreciative of my being there. And I actually spent 11 years there, but I want to show you what the expression of their love was. They were so excited that they were the church to encourage me and support me during my ordination process and to see me ordained as uh, a member and in full connection of the California Nevada Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church that they gave me this black robe. And many of you have seen me wear this black, black, black robe uh, as I have preached on more solemn occasions uh, and, uh, and also at times when I've uh, administered the sacrament of Holy Communion and also that of baptism. I cherish this black robe not because 
particularly I cherish robes. I don't wear robes that often. But when I do, there isn't a time that I pick up this black robe without, without my thinking of that congregation and the people there and the sacrifice they made to make this gift to me possible and in a way letting me know that they welcomed this stranger in their midst. And how beautiful that welcome was. And it remained throughout the time that I was there 11 years. My next appointment was to the Los Gatos United Methodist Church. I was appointed lead pastor in that church, which had several staff members, and it was a fairly large church. And I remember my very first Sunday being out on the chancel and looking out over quite a sea of folks and giving my first sermon. And one of the first gifts that I received from that congregation was this huge basket full of gifts of uh, items from stores in the downtown area which surrounded the church. And I thought, how beautiful an expression, not only am I being welcomed into this congregation, but I'm being welcomed into downtown Los Gatos as well. As, as I started digging through that uh, gift basket, which was just a cornucopia of gifts representing the different stores and shops in Los Gatos, I found multiple coffee cups, and yes, 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 those cherished coffee gift cards. Can I tell you that I was using gift cards in coffee shops for months after that first gift? But the welcome to the stranger didn't stop there. When I first went to the Los Gatos Church, they had no parsonage. In fact, they had no place for me to live, and they would have had to have paid exorbitant rent in order to allow me to stay in a place close to the church. So several people got together and they said, you know what? What if we took a special pledge offering and came together so that we could pay the down payment on a house that would be the parsonage for this church? Can I tell you that in less than six weeks, that pledge campaign was fulfilled and they had enough to put the down payment on down on a beautiful home in Albany Valley, which became and still is the parsonage to Los Gatos United Methodist Church, they welcomed the stranger in their midst by putting a roof over my head. Likewise, when I went to my next appointment at Napa United Methodist Church, I remember it was July 1st. It was one of the hottest days I had ever experienced in 2011. By the end of the service, the sweat was just rolling off of me. The sanctuary had no air condition, and it was just plain hot. Well, that afternoon, I was invited to a party uh, that the choir was holding, and it was the end of the year party for the choir, and it was also a time to welcome me, the stranger, in their midst. When I arrived at the home that afternoon, and it was still very, very hot, uh, where the party was being held, they greeted me with an announcement. The choir had taken up an offering to install air conditioning in the parsonage that Joe and I were about to move into. Um, what a gift. Where in Napa, sometimes it gets hot during the summer. It, we might have several weeks where we have intense heat. We knew that this congregation was always already caring for us, that the choir had taken up this offering to welcome the strangers in their midst by creating the opportunity for us to live in comfort. Finally, I want to just share with you the story about my being welcomed into this congregation. And the first Sunday that I spent in your midst, again, I want to go back to this robe, but this time I want to share with you the beautiful stole that I was presented. And I wear this stole with pride, not only because it's beautiful, but because it will always represent the generosity and welcoming of the people of this congregation. This will always be held close to my heart because it represents the good people of Sparks United Methodist Church. And just as was true of Los Gatos, this congregation did not have a parsonage. And so 
they were concerned about how they might come together and provide a parsonage, a roof over the head of their new pastor uh, and uh, 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 Joanne, and they were able to do that with the generosity of the entire congregation coming together in a charge conference and purchasing the beautiful home, which is now the parsonage to the church, over on Wabash Circle. Many of you have seen it. I, I really covet the opportunity for all of you to see the beautiful home that you've made possible for us to live in. I wanted to take this time to share what it felt like to be the stranger in the midst of those who gave selflessly, who cared for others at least as much as they cared for themselves. Friends, of all of the aspects that characterize the kingdom of God, that is probably the one aspect more than any other that characterizes the inbreaking of that kingdom. When we care for the other as much as we care for ourselves, miracles happen. Churches thrive, pastors are welcomed, and they grow spiritually. And yes, just as our Episcopal leader in Manhattan stated, when we learn how to care for one another as much as we care for ourselves, we will control this pandemic. So as we enter this beautiful Thanksgiving week, I encourage each of us to just take a little bit of time to count the blessings, to recall those times when we were the stranger and others came to our side and showed us God's grace through their resource, through their gifts, and how we felt, how that made us feel welcome, how that helped us transition from a stranger to a lifelong friend. That is really the fulfillment of the deep commitment to the great commandment that we're talking about in this series. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You love your neighbor as you love yourself. And it is in that process of loving that we have accomplished God's kingdom in our midst. Take some time to count your blessings this season. And even though it's going to be a very strange Thanksgiving, a Thanksgiving that will be much smaller than many of us are used to experiencing, a Thanksgiving where many members of our family will be unable to gather in ways that we've been used to, let's not forget that Thanksgiving can still happen without there being hordes of people and tons of food. Because all that's really required for Thanksgiving is a generous heart and a recognition then yes, that yes, when each of us played the role of the stranger, others gave selflessly. Happy Thanksgiving.
Hi, my name is Carla Bowman, and I am a retired pastor and an active Christian here at Sparks United Methodist Church. Um, six, eight years ago, I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, and it has turned out to be a tremendous teacher in helping me learn how to take care of myself. I do that in three different ways. First is my body. I make healthy choices for meals whenever possible, and I eat them regularly at 12 and 5 o'clock at night, 8 o'clock in the morning. I see my doctor regularly. Secondly, I try to keep my mind healthy, and I do that mainly through reading right now, and there's some great shows on PBS. I like to um, uh, read books about theology and about archaeology, as well as just for pleasure. I stay connected with my friends and my family. Sometimes I do it that by video chat and sometimes just a phone call is a great thing. And thirdly, I do that by keeping my spirit healthy. I believe that I am a beloved child of God and that helps me to remember that I am not worthless. When I make a mistake, it's okay to forgive myself and move on. And I also remember that other people make mistakes and so I practice forgiveness and learn to move on in my relationships with those people also. Nobody is worthless. We are all beloved of God. So we cannot change the world. We cannot really love the world until we learn to love ourselves. So just do it. Hi, I'm Megan and um, I'm thankful for my amazing church and the committees I'm on. Hello, my name is Peter Sterick and I'm thankful for my parents and my cats. Hi, I'm Peter Sterick. I'm thankful for beer and bacon. Thankful for my children. Hello, church family. It's Cindy Sabatini here. I am so thankful for you, for all my friends, my family, the ability to share time with Lisa and Melody. So I just want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. Hi friends, I'm Meg Mason. It's almost Thanksgiving. I'm going to start with a quote that I saw on my news feed that Cindy put an arm into and it said, best quote for 2020. This is not the year to get everything you want. This is the year to appreciate everything you have. And so a few days ago, I decided to do that every morning instead of complain about what I can't do. So this quilt reminds me of when Martha Brown requested it for me in 2010. It reminds me of all of my church friends, many church friends, but here's four of them. Some here, some not here. And my family and all the Thanksgiving dinners passed when we could all get together. There's two sons, a little bit older now. And I just wish for you that you have a safe, um, loving Thanksgiving and Christmas, no matter how you have to have it. The love is still there and we must enjoy while we can. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Mark Sargent. Um, I would like to tell you all how blessed we are, really, through all this turmoil that's going on right now. Um, I feel that uh, we are still blessed by God. I am so thankful uh, for the family's health, my kids, our kids. Joe, Paige, Kylie, uh, they're all doing well in their own world. Um, I'm, I'm grateful during these times that I can still use the gifts God has given me for the music that I'm able to play every week, every Sunday, uh, thanks to a whole lot of people involved. And um, it, it, that's, it keeps me going. That's a big part of me that keeps me going. And I'm also so grateful for my wife, Mona. We're, we're partners. Uh, we have been for 25 years now. Amazing. Um, but 
being cooped up together for this long, <laughs> it's still a, a wonderful experience. And um, I just like to say, bless all the church family out there. Thank you. I am ever so grateful to my God for the blessed life I've had. I am grateful to my parents and grandparents and my siblings who nurtured and nourished me mind, body, and soul, and gave me a sense of what it is to live life by a moral and ethical code. I am grateful for my three children and all the young people that I have had a hand in raising and educating. They have given me purpose, a feeling of continuity, and a firm hope for the future. I'm exceedingly blessed by my husband. He makes my life unbelievably joyful each and every day. And I'm grateful for friends and extended family for enriching my life. I thank God that I have had a beautiful home for the last 35 years, keeping the weather out and the love in. I am grateful to God for stars and trees, wild animals and domestic, winds, and sunshine, and for all the blessings in my life. Hi, my name is Cindy Evans, and I'll be leading us in prayer today for this Thanksgiving week. As we gather together in worship, I hope that you have had some opportunities to think about what you can be thankful for. Um, even in hard times, uh, it's good to pause and think about what we are thankful for. So let us pray together to our God who gives us much. Pray with me. Creator God, giver of all things, we thank you for the blessings in our lives. And amongst the challenges, we even thank you for what we can find in those challenges. Help us open our hearts to find your love and your grace in all the moments of our lives. And right now we pray for those who are lost and lonely. And we pray for the secure and the confidence. Gather us into your fold that we may be healed and transformed. Guide us in your world that we may be part of ministries of healing and hope. We lift up names of those who we have lost in this last year. This last month we've lost a couple close friends of our church community. We name them in our hearts today. And we lift up those who are ill, challenged by economic circumstances, or sad in heart. And Lord, as the rain pours down around me, we are thankful that the rain that followed the wind that had led to a fire. And we are thankful that the news says that that fire is in the mopping up stages as we rec record today. Lord. We are so ever so thankful for those things. Help us to remember the gifts that you give us and the largest gift that you gave your only son for us, that we might know joy, that we might understand your love in a deeper way. Help us as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to feel you more deeply in our lives each day. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hi, I'm Wayne Holland and I'm part of the church outreach team. Recently, you heard Pastor Lee talk about loving your neighbors and that's a portion of the deep commitment to the great commandment. I want to take this opportunity to talk about more about loving our, our neighbors. I personally believe that we as a church value our neighbors, value all neighbors, all people, all lives. We're more than just a brick and mortar over side there that dead ends at the door. We expand our properties all the way out to the entire community as far as you can see around here. We do this in areas like Wendy's Cafe, the food pantry, and most recently, 
the giving tree for the schools in our area. On this same theme, Sparks United Methodist Church recently coordinated with two agencies, Awaken and the Children's Cabinet, to show our, how we do love our neighbors. With the Children's Cabinet, Sparks United Methodist Church has designated a safe place for the youth in our neighborhood. We utilize these signs to identify our safe places, one here at the food pantry, one outside the pastor's office, and we have a couple on the main side on Pyramid. Office staff and food pantry volunteers have been trained by the children's cabinet to react when the youth comes in the door and asks for help. It actually isn't very much. All we primarily do is give them comfort and assistance and sanctuary for a short time until a representative from the children's cabinet comes and they give them more personal assistance. But for that particular moment in the child's time, that specific time, it's sanctuary for them, it's safety, and it gives them a chance to not only get their life together temporarily, but to figure out what they're going to do for the rest of their lives. It's a very important moment in them. Second program I mentioned was Awaken. Reno has a big problem with human trafficking. and We asked Awaken to come and help us address what we could do about it. We had training with our volunteers here at the food pantry to talk about recognizing what human trafficking looks like, and there are a lot of secret signs and codes that you can tell by, how to approach a person without scaring them or offending them, and how to offer them help so they can get out of that business if they want to. We really want to show them the love of God here, that they're not alone, that they're not forgotten, and that someone cares about them and without judgment. That's the most important thing. We do not judge around here. As a church, this is our culture. This is what we're here for. This is our mission. I believe, the type, I believe in these types of programs. I believe in our church, and I believe in our desire to love all people all the time as part of the deep commitment and the great commandment. Thank you. Hey, thanks so much for joining us for worship today. And again, I hope that you will face into this week having been encouraged by the time we've spent together this morning so that we indeed carry forward with us grateful hearts, enjoying the blessings that God has given us. Even if it's just a short period of time each day, spend a little time outdoors, get some sunshine, enjoy God's natural beauty. And uh, I also want to thank you. Many of you have come forward with our special Thanksgiving offering. Uh, there's still time to do that, and so please be mindful that that is so important for uh, sustaining our staff and the strength of our ministry. So we pray that you'll be generous during this time of Thanksgiving. I uh, also want to remind you that many of our ministries continue to operate, particularly uh, our uh, food pantry. We did have to suspend uh, Wendy's box lunch this, this time just because of the, the rise in COVID but we're doing everything we possibly can to make sure that people who are in need are receiving the food that they absolutely must have. So we thank you for not only the participation of your giving in offering, but also of the hands that you put to service to others. Those are all acts of, acts of love in loving God with heart, soul, mind, and strength and serving your neighbor as yourself. And so as I do every Sunday, I wanna pray especially this week, that you are safe, that you are well, that you are blessed, and that you count your blessings. And as you count your blessings, you will be blessed. You will receive blessings from God, shaken down, running.
Oh, hey.